Hello everyone, this is MJ with Minio. Welcome back to the Minio on Kubernetes and Minio Kubernetes Operator course. This video is going to be just a complete lab video where I actually walk you through all of the steps, one after the other, to deploy the Minio operator as well as a Minio tenant on top of the operator. So you can see that process as one long lab. I realize it is unlikely that you will be deploying the operator and not deploying a tenant. And so I wanted to see have you be able to see that process all as one. So let's jump right into the lab. So here we are on the lab server. And if we do a kubectl get pods minus a, you can see that we do not have anything deployed for the operator as of yet. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and to deploy the minio, actually install rather the minio crew component. So we'll do a crew update and make sure that that is up to date. And then we will do a kubectl crew install minio. And we could run the kubectl crew upgrade, but we're not gonna do that because I already have my lab all laid out but this is just a little bit old and that was recent really released. So just be careful when you're updating versions that you're not going to impact something you've done previously. So next we need to go ahead and do an init. So we're gonna do a kubectl minio init and that's actually gonna deploy the minio operator on our system. So now that that's been done, if we do a get pods minus a, we can see that the operator pods are actually up and running. And if we look at everything that was created by that init command, we can run kubectl get all in the namespace for minio operator and see that there are a number of different things, uh, the operator console, some services that were created, some deployments and other things. So it looks like everything is up and running for our minio operator. The next thing that we're going to do in our lab case, because we want persistent access to the operator, is to deploy a ingress that can access the operator. So I already have that defined. And they've already defined a file to deploy the ingress. So let's see what files we have here. We're actually going to choose this operator console ingress here. So if I do an cat on the operator console ingress, we can see that we've defined this as the minio operator console.dsodemo.org and it's pointing to the backend service for the console of 9090. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that. And that ingress has been created. So now we should be able to access our minio operator on this address that we defined here. Let's go ahead and give that a try. So here we are in our browser, and let's go ahead and hit the minio operator console.dsodemo.org, which we defined. Excellent. So now we have a persistent access point into our operator via the ingress that we just defined. The next thing we need to do is actually to get the secret, the Java web token, to actually access this. So this expects a JWT. So we'll go ahead and run this command here. Again, this is in the documentation, so you don't need to memorize this right off the bat. And you can see here that this is uh, printed out on the screen. Now you're going to need to, if your screen wraps like mine does, you're going to need to ignore this root here and start right before where it says root and copy this entire string and then paste that as the JWT for the minio operator console. So now I'm logged into the console, but we do not have any tenants defined here. So let's go ahead and create a tenant next. All right. So now that we have access to the operator and the operator console, we're going to go ahead and create the tenant. The first thing we need to do when we create a tenant is to create a namespace for that tenant. So each tenant should have its own namespace. Now that the namespace is created, we can go ahead and run this command, which is kubectl minio tenant create. The tenant name is going to be minio tenant one. We're going to give it 20 gigs of space because this is a test server. We're going to say one server and one volume. The namespace is minio tenant one, which is the namespace we just created. The storage class that we're going to choose is direct PV and we're gonna enable host sharing and disable TLS. And now we get the output that, again, you should make note of the username and password that you're going to use as the administrative access for accessing this tenant. The next thing we need is a way to access this tenant. Again, the instructions provided give you a way to do some sort of proxy or port forwarding, but that's not a persistent access method. So we're gonna actually create an ingress for this. So if we look here, we have this minio tenant one ingress. Let's actually take a look at that before we deploy it. 
And we can see here that we're defining an ingress in the namespace of minio tenant one. We're giving it the DNS name that's already set up. So that DNS record's already created on my DNS host and pointing to the proper IP address for this host, minio tenant onedsodemoorg And we're pointing to the backend service, uh, minio tenant console of 9090. So let's go ahead and apply that. And we can now see that the ingress has been created and we can go and confirm that both ingresses exist. So if we do a kubectl get ingress minus a, we can see that there's an ingress for the operator as well as an ingress for tenant one. So let's go ahead and go access tenant one using those credentials that we had earlier. So here we are in the tenant one console at the address that we defined for our ingress. And now we can use those credentials that were generated earlier when we created the tenant to actually log in as the tenant admin and start performing functions in here. So here we are, we are all logged in and ready to go. I also hear in your head, what you may be asking is how do I create another tenant? It's actually very simple. We can actually go back and follow the same processes that we followed earlier except for name it something else. So in this case, we're gonna create tenant two. So we're gonna create a tenant two namespace and then using a very similar command as before, we're going to simply reference the tenant two namespace as well as create a tenant called tenant two. And again, it creates the tenant, gives the output with the administrative login for this particular tenant, tenant two, and if we come and take a look at our Minio operator and look at the tenants, we can actually see that there is now a second tenant coming online and you can continue to do this for however many tenants that you need. So hopefully that shows you how easy the process is once you have everything else in place from the Kubernetes perspective to actually get the Kubernetes operator up and running and start deploying multiple tenants for your individual tenants, whether they're inside or outside your organization to use. Hopefully this has been valuable to you and you've learned something from this and good luck on deploying your own Minio tenants using the Minio operator and Minio on Kubernetes. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks and have a good one.